some of the structures that we were able to palpate and or see along the anterior aspect of the upper limb are also going to be identifiable from a posterior perspective. But we're going to now add to the list a few more structures. The first of these is going to be related to the scapula. The medial border of the scapula can be palpated along the medial edge here of the posterior aspect of the shoulder. Now the patient might need to roll their shoulder or abduct it slightly or protract it or retract it in order to facilitate a physician being able to properly palpate from the inferior extent of the scapula up along the full length of that medial border. It's quite easy, however, to palpate the spine of the scapula. And you can even do this on yourself by placing the contralateral hand up over the shoulder and walking along the length of the spine of the scapula, which could help you identify the supraspinous and infraspinous fossas. If you continued to palpate laterally along the spine of the scapula, you would reach the acromion process of the scapula, which would then wrap around to form the acromioclavicular joint with the lateral end of the clavicle. At the elbow, we're going to be able to palpate the same two epicondyles of the humerus from a posterior perspective. We're going to be able to feel the medial epicondyle and lateral epicondyles of the humerus. Additionally, you're going to be able to palpate between the two epicondyles the olecranon process of the ulna. Now the olecranon process of the ulna if you flex and extend, is going to be able to still be felt in any position of flexion. Palpating down through the forearm, you should be able to feel the posterior border of the ulna, which is going to be quite superficial along the posterior aspect of our forearm. Continuing to feel down the posterior border of the ulna, you will end at the styloid process of the ulna which is going to be directed more posteriorly than the styloid process of the radius, which will be more laterally located. So remember that the styloid process of the radius limited lateral deviation of our wrist, while the styloid process of the ulna is going to limit extension of the wrist. Typically, in the back of the wrist, you can palpate the capitate, which is going to be the most pronounced carpal bone that you will feel, especially in a flexed wrist along the midline. The metacarpal bones can similarly still be palpated on the dorsal aspect, and actually the heads of the metacarpals are going to be relatively easy to palpate in anybody as they flex or make a fist as are the different interphalangeal joints and the phalanges involved in the fingers.